Hello, everyone. Welcome to Yoga Upload. I'm Maris Aylward, and we are live today for our monthly chat, first Monday of the month. And our topic for this month is yoga for beginners, what you should know. This video is both for those who are just starting out their yoga practice and also for those who have never tried yoga before but are curious to, to start a practice, just don't know how or maybe intimidated or confused about what yoga is and the, all the different kinds out there. So hopefully what we talk about today will encourage you and inspire you to start a yoga practice or continue the one that you have now. All right. Hello, Agnieszka. Um, great. Thanks for, for joining us today. If you are here with me live, thank you so much. I just want to make sure all the tech stuff is good, that you can see and hear me clearly. So if there is any problem at all, uh, please write in the chat. I will be able to see that. Um, there might be a little bit of a delay. Uh, in in me reading the chats, but but I can see that. All right, Jenny Anderson. Hello, everyone. Hello to you, Jenny, and thanks for joining us today. All right, I think everything is good. If you're saying hello to me, then you must see and hear me. All right, let's before we dive right into it, I want to go through what we're talking about for the next 30 minutes. That's my maximum. Hopefully we are done at 11 a.m. Uh, 30 minutes. So I'll start with just a few announcements that I need to make uh, regarding yoga upload. And then we'll dive right into just tips for, for beginners and uh, different styles of yoga. It can be a little confusing for for a newbie uh, to sort out all the styles out there. How do you find which one is right for you? Uh, different myths or misconceptions that people have about yoga that might be hindering you from uh, trying a yoga practice. Uh, so we'll, we'll dispel those myths today. Um, I have some tips for surviving your first yoga class. I wrote a blog post on that. So a few tips if you are ready to venture out of your home and try your first yoga class. Uh, tips for just practicing at home if that's what you choose to do. And just I'd like to share my own experience as a yoga beginner many years ago and as a yoga teacher and just the benefits of yoga and other other tips to hopefully inspire you uh, to start a practice. And uh, I'll set aside some time at the end. If you have questions right now, if you're watching live, uh, Christina E. Gal Pniewski, if any of you guys have any questions today, um, you can write that in the chat and I'll set aside time towards the end to answer those. Um, all right, let's start. I have my notes here. So if you see me looking down, I'm probably looking at my outline and I have some notes on my computer too. So that's how we're going to do it. All right, some announcements first. First announcement is I am having a sale this month of November on my website. As some of you know, my YouTube classes on YouTube are free, obviously, but you can download them from my website. So you can save it to your phone or your tablet. Uh, you can watch it without internet and you own it forever. No matter what happens to me or to YouTube, you will have your favorite video. So you can download, download those for a fee. It's $5 per video. But for the month of November, I'm holding a sale. It's buy one, get one free on all the yoga videos. So that's um, that's my Thanksgiving gift to everybody, I guess. So if you have any favorite yoga videos, uh, go ahead and download download them from my website. I will link everything in the description box below. Um, YogaUpload.me is my website, and you can click download yoga videos. It'll pop up there. The sale. Um, your discount code will automatically be applied. You put two videos in the cart, and you only pay for one. All right, so buy one, get one free in all the videos. Um, next announcement, just one more. Um, thank you so much for all of the supporters on Patreon. So for those of you who don't know, there are two ways to support um, the channel. Um, one is just making a one-time donation of any amount through my PayPal. Again, the link is in the description below. 
or some of you, more than 50 of you, have decided to make a monthly contribution on Patreon. Again, you can do this at any amount. And so thank you. We now have about fifth, more than 50 patrons there. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your support. And you um, you, you have, have been really, really a, a great community. And if you are part of that, when you become a part of that Patreon community, you get extra perks. You get early access to videos. You get access to 10 exclusive yoga videos. So there are Patron-only videos not available to the public. Um, you can join the private Facebook group, and you also get free video downloads every month. So lots of perks. If you want to know more about that, um, patreon.com slash yoga upload. The link is down below if you're curious about supporting yoga upload. Really appreciate that. All right. Let's dive right in. What is, um, okay, I have to read that later on. <laughs> I'm very confused by some of the comments. <laughs> All right, yoga for beginners. Practice tips, styles, inspiration, all of these things. Starting anything new can be really overwhelming or intimidating, downright scary for some, but that's understandable. Don't worry, you're in good company. We all had to start somewhere. Um, with our yoga practice. So this is uh, what I'll, uh, I'll begin with today, our discussion. Um, some people might be held back from trying yoga because of some preconceived uh, notions that they have based on what they see on social media or what they um, read in magazines or what people tell them. You might have these assumptions that are not necessarily true assumptions about yoga that are blocking you from from trying it so let's try and go through a few of those all right first the one that i hear the most as a yoga teacher is maris i can't do yoga because i'm not flexible have you heard that before yes maybe you've said it yourself and the funny thing about that is that's like saying, I can't drink water because I'm not hydrated. That is precisely the reason that you should drink some water to hydrate yourself. So that is precisely the reason to do yoga is to potentially improve your flexibility. No one is expecting you to come in like you're already a gymnast or a ballerina or a contortionist, and you're not expected to do all these pretzel-like poses when you're in yoga class. So that's not what it's about. Um, don't let these images that you see on Instagram, <laughs> the, the, though they are beautiful and inspiring, um, it, it's not right for everyone. And that, that just presents a very narrow view of what yoga is and what it can potentially do for you. So don't let those images scare you because that's not what happens in a yoga class. The teacher is not going to force you into these weird shapes that your body is not ready for. So you're there to learn, to explore. Um, no one is expecting you to do anything that you don't want to do or are not able to do at the moment. Okay. All right. Okay. That's the first myth is that you can't do yoga because you're not flexible. You should go <laughs> because that'll help. All right. Second one is, you know, yoga is boring. You just sit around doing nothing. From the outside, it may look that way, especially if you're looking at maybe a gentle yoga class or a yin or restorative or a stretch class, but there's a lot going on there. You will learn so much about your body and something that looks very simple from the outside is actually quite physically challenging. And just ask those who've been doing yoga for a while. You always think that, oh, they're not moving. They're just in a pose. But really, it's very, very physically challenging to hold certain poses. So you will increase your, your strength and your flexibility, your balance and your focus with yoga. You are not not doing anything inside, even if it looks like that. 
from the outside. All right. <laughs> I'm, I promise you I'm going to go through all the, the chats later on. I'll just go through these myths, okay? All right. Another one, uh, another myth is that yoga is a religion and therefore I can't practice yoga because it will conflict with my faith. Now, different teachers will have a different approach to this. Um, although yoga does come from a spiritual tradition, like there is some lineage there, and it can be a spiritual practice, that's true. But as a yoga, yoga beginner coming into yoga for the first time, you don't have to participate in anything that you're not comfortable with. If you already have a religious community, if you already have a spiritual practice, keep on doing that you can keep your yoga separate from that. Now, some people, after they start yoga, they want to incorporate more yoga philosophy and the spiritual traditions of it. Great, there's a place for that. If you don't ever want to go there, that's okay too. So just know that when you come in, you're not going to be forced to do anything that you're not comfortable with. And and a lot of, and depending on the class and the teacher that you take, you should be able to find... Um, uh, a teacher in a class that you're that you're comfortable with and that you won't feel is conflicting with your faith. So, yeah, that's a that's a separate subject on its on its own. The yoga as a spiritual practice because it definitely can be, but it doesn't have to be. So don't let that scare you away from it. Okay. All right. Last um, few myths that I'm going to talk about here. A lot of people feel that yoga is just for a specific group of people. It's either yoga is just for women or yoga is just for young and healthy people. Yoga is just for vegetarians and vegans or yoga is, is just a hippie thing. So again, completely understandable. <laughs> You'll see a lot um, of images on social media that make you think that this is the case, that it is specific to young, skinny, fit women right? But the truth is, um, there was a time actually in India that only men were allowed to practice yoga. Um, that's fortunately changed over uh, the, the decades. And, and so now women are practicing yoga. In fact, um, there are more women practicing yoga now than men, but it doesn't mean that men can not practice it. In fact, there are some specific um, groups out there um, that caters specifically to men. There's Manflow Yoga. He has a YouTube channel um, here. And I've seen Broga, like bro, like yoga for bros. <laughs> there are Broga classes somewhere out there that are for men. Um, yoga is just for young and healthy people. Again, not true. Any age um, can practice yoga. Any physical condition can practice yoga. Uh, you just have to find the right class, teacher, and style for you. Um, right now, there's a lot of uh, yoga for a specific purpose out there. You have yoga for, for veterans, for PTSD. You have yoga for eating disorders. You have yoga for depression and anxiety. You have um, yo a chair yoga. Chair yoga is very beneficial if you are maybe recovering from injuries or some older people prefer a very gentle way of practicing uh, where they're more stable and they have more support with chair yoga. So again, there is a lot out there that can cater to your specific needs and preferences. Don't go into one yoga class and you don't like it and you decide, I hate yoga, yoga is not for me. <laughs> it could be that just that specific class, teacher or style or place is not right for you, but somewhere out there, it's um, you, you're gonna find it if you if you keep exploring. Um, yoga is for vegetarians and vegans only. I've touched on this actually in that last uh, live video that I did, and also um, I have a blog post on on yoga as it relates to diet. So I'll include that all in the description box below. So again, everyone is welcome, no matter what your background is, no matter what where you come from, no matter what your religion is, your race, your physical condition, you're welcome to practice yoga. There's something out there that will be right for you. Maybe several things. 
All right. Okay. Let me just take a little break from my notes here and just see what's going on and 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 maybe I can answer just some. Okay. Um All right. Mr. Clean 1357, the short and simple stretch and flow yoga 30 minute session is one of my favorites. So, oh, thank you. Carol, Harvey, will you be able to make some videos for those those of us who may be going through chemo and still want to stay with our practice. I don't have a lot of experience working with um, patients, chemo patients, um, but what do you think of just maybe gentle, more meditative practices that um, don't tax the body so much? I already have some of those on the channel, but that's something for me to think about. And I just, it's not my area of expertise, so I'll need to look into it and do more, more research. Um, all right, thank you for your ongoing yoga teaching. They mean the world to me. You're a fantastic teacher. For Maggie Estrada, thank you so much, Maggie. Um, Julie Hunt, I might be skipping some because I think there's a delay. Uh, Maris, do you feel yoga and incorporating a weight training program are counterproductive? No, I don't. I love going to the gym. Uh, I, I don't think it's counterproductive at all. Um, in fact, it's in my one of my tips is to have a balanced routine overall. So you might have some cardiovascular training, you'll have some strength training, weight training, and then you have your your yoga or your Pilates or your bar. Um, and so having, I think, a balance of these different practices will not only keep your routine from becoming repetitive and boring, it's just it's just better balance for you overall, for your body. Um, and because you already have a yoga practice, um, Julie, you will be able to take your mindfulness and your knowledge of how to breathe and, you know, body awareness to your weight training program. And that will hopefully um, make you less susceptible to injury because you're more aware. You're not just mindlessly doing the exercises because of your yoga training. You're you're more present. Um, you breathe and you pay attention <laughs> to whatever you're doing. So I hope that um, that helps. TK, would you ever consider doing more guided shavasana and or guided meditation? similar to Kriya or any format with breathing techniques. Uh, with regards to Kriyas, I don't have a lot of experience with Kriyas. Um, I can look into it, but I do already have two guided Shavasana videos on the channel. Um, and guided med meditation, I've thought about that for so long. I really should just do it because I want to do it. <laughs> I actually do want to add that to the channel. So that will um, come eventually. All right, all right. Let's go back to my um, my notes here. Oh my gosh, we're already halfway through everything, and I'm not even halfway through my uh, my stuff here. All right. Now, going back to so those are a lot of the common myths and misconceptions about yoga. Now, once you've gotten over that hurdle and you're ready to try, uh, you're ready to try yoga. Uh, the first thing you should do is to do your research. Whether you're, whether you're going out to a yoga studio or gym for your first class or you're going to start a home practice using videos and, and uh, online subscriptions and YouTube, then you need to do your research. And the first thing you need to do is to familiarize yourself with just the common styles of yoga. So if you see a word, <laughs> you'll, you'll have an idea of, of what it is. So... First of all, the obvious one, um, if possible, find a, a yoga for beginners class or a yoga basics class or a gentle yoga for beginners class because then you come in, uh, no pressure. The teacher, it, the teacher's job is to, to help you learn the poses to keep you safe and uh, to help you out and assist you with, with everything that you need. So that would be a really, really good start for you is to just go to a yoga for beginners class. Then everyone there is on the same page. Um, now, there are other styles you can explore even if you're a beginner. So if you see 
Hatha Yoga, H-A-T-H-A. We're going through the, the different styles now. Hatha Yoga. Um, so first of all, Hatha is a general term that refers to the physical practice of yoga, as opposed to the other aspects of yoga, like philosophy and meditation and the spiritual aspects of it. So Hatha Yoga is the physical practice. Now, if you see that as a class description at the studio, the gym, or online, um, it can mean several things. It can mean that it's a more gentle yoga practice, or it can be challenging, but you don't move very fast. You hold the poses longer. So there's time to learn the alignment. There's time to really explore how you're feeling in the pose. So for beginners, I recommend taking a Hatha Yoga class because you have time to learn all um, what you need to do with your body. <laughs> you have time to explore just the different sensations and the stretches and things of that nature. So Hatha Yoga would be a good uh, start. Um, another style you might encounter is vinyasa. So if you see vinyasa, vinyasa flow yoga or yoga flow, um, again, that means several things. So first of all, the word vinyasa is a Sanskrit term that's usually translated as to place in a special way. But in the context of modern yoga classes, vinyasa means the flowing style of practice. So as opposed to the Hatha style where you're more static, you're flowing in, in vinyasa. You flow with a breath. You inhale, do one thing, exhale, do one thing. You flow from one pose to the next. It's almost like a dance. Now, vinyasa can be physically challenging and you'll build strength, flexibility, balance. Um, so who is it for? Can beginners do it? Uh, I wouldn't recommend your first class to be vinyasa if you're a beginner, but if there's no other class offering and that's all you can do, that's okay. Especially if, if you're a yoga beginner with no injuries, first of all, okay. If you're a yoga beginner with no injuries, maybe you have a background in dance, athletics, um, you're physically active already, you have a high level of body awareness, vinyasa might actually be fun for you uh, to try because it's there's constant movement and it's challenging. You'll build heat and and you, you test your coordination and, and your balance. So that might be a good one. Again, if you don't have any, any injuries and you're already physically active. So that's your vinyasa flow yoga style. Now, vinyasa is also used to refer to the transition sequence of plank to low plank, your chaturanga, to cobra or upward facing dog, and back to downward facing dog. So if you're new and maybe not familiar with that yet, if you hear take your vinyasa or go through your vinyasa. Um, that is usually what the teacher means, but they'll go through the, the poses there with you. Um, under vinyasa, you might find power yoga, power vinyasa, power yoga flow. I mean, the inclusion of the word power <laughs> means that it's a stronger practice. So um, again, you need to be injury free and already physically active to do that. Um, other styles uh, that you might encounter are yin and restorative, and they need to be distinguished from one another. Yin yoga is your deep stretch yoga, um, where you hold the poses for three to five minutes, and and it can be physically challenging because it's um, you're actively um, um, working there. It's not just for relaxation. There is some active stretching that's happening. Um, you might be familiar with the Taoist concepts of yin and yang. They're opposite and complementary principles. So yang is the more masculine, active energy. Your vinyasa and hatha are yang practices. And then yin would be the more passive styles where you're just on the floor the whole time. You're supported by props. Um, but yin is an, uh, a more active, deep stretch. Restorative, on the other hand, is really for relaxation. It... Um, great antidote to stress. If you have certain injuries, your body is supported completely by props. So that's something you might explore if, 
if you want just a more quiet, slow, contemplative practice that will relax you. Um, yeah, the, there's some passive stretching that's happening, but that's not your goal. Your goal is to just really restore and relax. So how do you know which one to choose for yourself? Initially, you'll gravitate towards the practices that are for your personality. Like if you're more type A and goal oriented, you might do vinyasa and hatha and, you know, it's active, there's music and things like that. If you're more quiet, introspective, you might gravitate towards yin and restorative. And that's fine. Just know that eventually um, yoga is about bringing balance into our lives. So you'll eventually have to try other styles to get out of your comfort zone. Um, but in the beginning, go ahead and just choose what is appealing to you. All right. Um, okay. What else do we have here? I think I need to go back for some, some of the stuff that I was skipping. And I'll do that in a bit. Okay. Christine Lewis. Hey, I, I've been meaning to answer your email, but I'm glad you're here. Maris, because my wrists are weak, it's difficult to do certain positions. I found that if I put two hand dumbbells on my mat and grip them, it's easier to do them. How do you feel about this? I think that's great that you found a way to do the poses and um, to just uh, and improvise. That's great. And use and gripping the dumbbells. I think that's a great idea. I mean, you do that in, in weight training when you're doing rows and things of that nature. So there's, I see absolutely nothing wrong with doing that if that works for you. Okay. Um, am Coop. There's a lot more to yoga than I thought. Thanks for making it clear for me. All sound good. You are welcome. And Yeska, more yin yoga videos. Yes, I'm actually going to film one today. All right, I can't believe I only have a few minutes left here. So we might go over a little bit because I have some other stuff I want to talk about. All right, let's um, go through just my tips if you want to go to a yoga class for the first time ever. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's that's usually very, very scary for people. But there are some things that um, can help you. So aside from doing your research, which I already went through, going through the different styles and class descriptions, read them carefully, um, you need to be prepared. And this will seem like it's trivial, but your yoga mat can make or break your practice, especially that first time, and what you're wearing. So first of all, you don't need any fancy, expensive gear or clothing for yoga. It doesn't matter. Don't spend too much if you're just starting out. Wear whatever you're comfortable with, um, whatever you use to work out is probably going to be okay. Having said that, it does help to wear form-fitting clothing because you can see your alignment better. The teacher can see your alignment better and help you um, with that. And also, if you're, let's say, wearing a loose top or a loose shirt, remember, you're going to be folding forward. You're going to be in downward facing dog. Your head is going to be below your hips and your shirt can go up to your face. And I know this seems trivial, <laughs> but really it's these little things, the minor annoyances that can make someone think, I hate yoga. This is not for me. Um, but really just small tweaks can, can solve that. So uh, more form fitting clothing would be good. Um, whatever you're comfortable in. Um, anything that won't make you feel self-conscious when you're when you're in yoga. Um, with the yoga mats, I have a lot of reviews for yoga mats. So um, go ahead and check check out my playlist for yoga mats because everyone will have different needs. Now, the number one thing that I see people have a problem with is they're slipping on their mat, right? Um, especially if you tend to sweat a lot, like me, <laughs> like my palms sweat, and I'm sliding on my yoga mat. And I was just, I hated it. I remember in the beginning, I was like, I can't do yoga because I just keep sliding all over the place. How, how are people doing this? Um, again, it's a matter of finding the right yoga mat that has good grip for you. Um, maybe you can use a towel, especially if you sweat a lot, that will help you just stay on your mat, keep you safe too. And so don't give up. If, if, if in the beginning it's just not working out, the yoga mat sucks, your knees hurt, your joints hurt because the mat is too thin, um, remember that there are a lot 
of different kinds of gear and props and clothes out there um, that you will discover eventually uh, and find what's right for you. So, so don't get frustrated with that first. I remember almost giving up on yoga just for the simple fact that I kept sliding around and I was sweating and I can't stay on my mat. But eventually I found, oh, I just put a towel over it and I'm fine. Now there are certain yoga mats that work better for me than others. So um, check out yoga mat reviews, do your research on that. All right, last two uh, last um, one thing. Come early so you have time to familiarize yourself with, with a yoga studio. You're gonna, you're gonna fill out some paperwork. And more importantly, don't hide in the back, okay? I see this a lot as a yoga teacher. Someone's new, someone's never met me, someone's never been to class, and they go and put their mat in the very back of the room. It doesn't make you invisible. I can still see you. <laughs> and also, it if a good yoga teacher is going to be walking around the room to check on everyone and make sure that whoever needs help um, gets the help. So, so it doesn't matter. Don't don't hide in the back. You might as well get your money's worth, position yourself at a place where you can see and hear the teacher clearly, and you will get more out of your yoga practice. Um, and I understand the 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 in the impulse to hide in the back as you're feeling self-conscious, especially if it's your first time. But trust me, all the other yoga students there are too focused on their own practice to spy on you. They're not looking at you. They don't care. <laughs> They care about their own practice, so no need to be self-conscious about that. And, you know, throughout all this, just have a beginner's mind. You're not there to perform. You're not there to compete. You're not even there to compete with yourself, not there to compete with others or yourself. You just show up, come as you are. Uh, you're there to learn. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fall. There's no failing at yoga. No one's grading you or evaluating your performance. Um, you're there to discover the practice, to explore it, to learn new ways to move, to breathe, um, and for your own well-being, for, for, your, for your body, your mind, and your spirit. So keep that in mind. Be open. Be open to learning and to making mistakes. That's the beginner's uh, mindset that you should have. And if you do choose to practice at home, um, um, just let go of expectations. You know, there are going to be distractions because you're at home, your phone, your kids and everything that needs to be done. So whatever you can do at home, even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, that's okay. You get interrupted. That's okay. Let go of, of, of the expectations of what your home yoga practice should look like. Just do what you can whenever you can. Um, and with the yoga props, if you don't have them at home, just use whatever you have. Um, yoga straps, you can use any belt or a towel. Um, yoga bolster, you can use any pillow or just a stack of blankets. So there are a lot of alternatives. I have a series on how to use yoga props and alternatives for them. So I'll, I'll if I remember, I hope I remember, I'll link that in the description box below later on. All right. Now, I wasn't able to go into as much detail as I wanted. Tips for your first yoga class and your home practice. I do have blog posts on all of these things. Styles of yoga, tips for a home practice, how to survive your first yoga class, and uh, the myths, the yoga myths, um, and debunking yoga myths. So all of those blog posts are in the description box below if you want to read them. Um, and refer to them every now and then. I go into more detail over there. All right, I've already gone over. <laughs> it's 34 minutes, but let's let's go through a few questions here. Okay. Um, TK, yay, so excited for more guided meditation. Your presence during Shavasana is very positive and peaceful emotionally, spiritually. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dorothy Baskin, I have to wear long pants because I sweat and get slippery on my mat. Yeah. Um, I didn't think I ever wear shorts in my practice. It's just, yeah, I'll, I'll slide all over the place. <laughs> um, Elki Aptru, sorry if I'm murdering people's names. <laughs> I prefer to put a beach towel over my mat. Yeah, 
totally. You can totally do that. You can put any kind of towel. Uh, there are specific uh, towels that are made for yoga that have the knobs underneath so it doesn't slide around. That works too. I have some of those. And I have reviews of the yoga towels um, also on my channel if you want to check that out. Um, yeah, Marshalls have thick mats all of the time for under $15. Yeah. So lots of different price ranges there for yoga mats, depending on what you're comfortable spending before you spend on the fancy expensive mats. And I admit I do have those because I'm, I'm a teacher. And so it's, it's part of my job. Um, you know, go to a yoga studio and try the different yoga mats that they have there. That would be a good way to, to test it out. Yeah. All right. Mm. Okay. Things keep on coming. Maggie Estrada, yoga retreat, please. Um, I, I, I've been thinking about yoga retreats for a long time, but I don't know if, if you are aware, I've announced it on my channel, but I am pregnant with baby number two. I got my big belly right here. Yay. <laughs> um, I'm seven months pregnant with baby number two and baby number one is going to be two in January. So yoga retreat is not possible right now, but rest assured it is always in my mind because <laughs> I want to do it at some point. Um, okay. Mangala Pawar. I wanted to thank you for uploading legs of the wall video. It's helped me a lot. Yeah. Great. Um, yoga on the wall. So good. So relaxing. All right. I might need to go back and look at the other stuff here. Okay. I want to just round it out and kind of conclude what we're um, talking about here. Yoga is so beneficial on, on different levels. Helps your body, your mind, your spirit. Um, it whatever your reasons are for wanting to start yoga or starting yoga, all of these are valid. All of these are valid and you are welcome um, in yoga. And don't get frustrated. Maybe if there's one thing I can leave yoga beginners with is if you try yoga one, two, or three times and you find that you don't like it, I urge you to keep exploring and to keep trying. Maybe pause for now and then try it at another time in the future because you might just find something that resonates with you that you connect with deeply. So I really hope that you keep keep exploring. Don't give up after one try. Might be the teacher you don't like, the style, the class, the place, the atmosphere, the music. Maybe just that day was not uh, the best day for you to try yoga, whatever it was. Um, give it another chance. Um, and also don't place a stigma on being a beginner. I think other people shy away from going to the yoga for beginners class because they're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but being a beginner is a blessing. It's such a blessing because you keep that open mind, you soak up all of the benefits and the knowledge um, without any pressure. And this pressure is usually self-imposed because we live in a culture where we're always performing, we're competing, we're driven to achieve, we need to complete tasks, we need to accomplish all of these things, we need to be everything to everyone. And, and, and that and sometimes we carry that over into our yoga practice. But I want to share this with you. Um, of why I was drawn to yoga in the first place was because my background before becoming a yoga teacher was in the entertainment industry and performing arts. So in the Philippines, I was an actress. Um, uh, I was in film, television, and theater. I was an events host. I was doing all of these things where I need to be at my best all the time. I need to be on all the time, always performing, always being judged and critiqued either applauded or criticized. And so that's how I approached everything, that I was always performing in competition with others or myself, meaning I always have to be better than I was before. And then I started practicing yoga and 
I had really, really good teachers in the very beginning. I was lucky because they always reminded me that you're not here to perform or compete or achieve anything. You're here for yourself. This is your time for self-care. You do what you need to do. If you need to rest and not do a certain pose, that's okay. If you're feeling good and strong and you want to push yourself and explore uh, the challenge, go for it. it it's just, and, and how, it, that just blew my mind. I'm like, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to be good at this. There's no succeeding or failing. Just just whatever I'm feeling is okay. Whatever I can do at the moment is okay. No one's going to grade me after this or applaud me or criticize me. And and I, I remember just being in tears in certain yoga classes because it was just such a relief to let go of all of that pressure, self-imposed pressure to, to keep doing and achieving. And that's why I was drawn to yoga in the first place was it was a refuge from, from everything else that I was doing. It was this space, my four corners of my yoga mat is a place where I can just be and be present and breathe and move in a way that feels right to me, that feels good to me. And I don't have to worry about anyone else. All right, that's it. <laughs> that's probably what I want to leave you with. Yoga is self-care not performance, not competition, not achievement. It's okay to have goals. It's fun to have goals, but it's not the point. Um, you're there to learn, explore, discover, and take care of yourself. We've gone 11 minutes over <laughs> and I'm still talking. <laughs> All right. I hope that that was helpful to you guys. Um, a lot of things I really wasn't able to cover. So if if there are some unanswered questions here, and there are a lot, um, I can address those in the in the comment section. And in future videos, this is not going to be the last live video. I I told you then uh, I told you that I was going to be doing this every first Monday of the month. So the next live video is going to be December. 3rd, same time, 10.30 a.m. Central. And I'm going to make that uh, live random Q&A. Ask me anything, absolutely anything under the sun. So we're not going to restrict ourselves to one topic. Um, I've already gotten a few questions from you from social media. Um, so I'm, I'll answer some of those, some unanswered questions here on the, on the chat right now and whatever comes up during the live video. So tune in for that. December 3rd, Monday, 10.30 a.m. is our next live video. And if you want to get notified of that, make sure you're following me either on Facebook or Instagram. All of these links are in the, in the description box below. You can join my email list. It's also in the description box below. And make sure you have your YouTube notifications on. Um, that way you get notified every time I have a video. And I think... I think that's it <laughs> gone way over let me just see if there's some other stuff i can address here angel walcott thank you for sharing your personal story namaste you're very welcome it was um yeah yoga is is one of the life-changing practices that i've encountered um dorothy great for anxiety and depression um, yin is best to gain flexibility. Muscles need to be in a pose for longer than half a minute to effectively lengthen. Uh, much longer than that. Three to five minutes would be the recommended hold for a lot of yin poses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that answers Fredo, Fredo 1, 1. Yeah. Uh, for improving flexibility, well, any style of yoga would address that, but if you want to really be more targeted, um, they're right about yin yoga. It's uh, it's it's deep stretch, and I have some yin yoga videos, and we'll be shooting one today. Um, Angie Jones thinking of uploading yin. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Sorry, I went over by 15 minutes. <laughs> I said I was going to end at 30 minutes, but I'm ending at 45. 
Uh, that was that was really good. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you join me in the next live video on December 3rd. And stay tuned for the next videos. There is a new video coming out next Monday, November 12th. It is a one hour full body vinyasa flow yoga class. So I hope you try that out. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Bye.